talk about the integumentary system. Integumentary system covers the whole body and protects the body from outside arms. The main organ of the integumentary system is your skin, which covers the whole body, right? And protects the internal structures or organs from outside. And accessory structures, this is the main skin, and accessory structures are nails, glands of the skin, remember not the other glands, glands of the skin. Sweat glands, sebaceous glands, and hair. So these are accessory structures. Okay. So we will mostly talk about the skin. We will see the layers of the skin. The skin has two layers: epidermis and dermis. Okay. So outer epidermis, inner dermis. We'll talk about those layers. Then we'll talk about different types of the skin. You have two types of the skin, thin skin and thick skin. Okay? Uh, we'll see the structure of thick and thin skin. Then we'll talk about the glands in the skin. Sweat and sebaceous glands. <coughs> we'll talk about the inner layer, dermis. Uh, and water loss. So, first, you already know the main organ is the skin, accessory structures are nails, hair, and glands of the skin. Now, your integumentary system or skin provides protection, right? You already know protection. In three ways, skin provides protection. One is called chemical protection. How? Your skin secretes low pH mantle. Low pH secretion. Now you tell me, low pH means acidic or alkaline? If pH goes down below 7, acidic, right? So, that means Low pH means acidic secretion, right? Mm -hmm. And that kills the microorganisms. Okay? That is chemical protection given by the skin. Biological protection. In your skin, you have phagocytic cells, macrophages and dendritic cells. They do what? Phagocytosis. Engulf the antigens. So, that is called biological protection. <coughs> Physical or mechanical protection. In your skin, you have a highly specialized protein. That protein is called keratin. So, keratin is what? Highly specialized protein in the skin inside the cells of the skin and that keratin prevents the water and water soluble substances from entering through the skin into the body. So it will stop. Make sense? So you know that a lot of microorganisms could enter into the body through the skin with water, right? If water can get in, but that keratin will not allow the water or water soluble uh, substances uh, entering into the body. Another chemical present in the skin that is called glycolipids. Glucose and lipid together. Glycolipids also prevent the water and water soluble substances. And that's why you know if you see in the swimming pool or water tub, bathtub for long time, water doesn't get in through the skin. 
right? If it does, then you will get big. It doesn't happen, right? So your water uh, skin won't let it get in. <coughs> so those are three ways skin gives protection. Another important function of skin is regulation of body temperature. You know, when the body temperature increases, sweating occurs. You all know that, right? If you get fever or you do exercise, when the body temperature increases, right? Metabolism increases, sweating occurs. Why? Sweat is mostly water. 99% volume of sweat is water. So you also know that water has what? High heat capacity. Remember that? So a small amount of water can take a lot of heat out from the body, right? So when sweating occurs, a lot of heat gets out with the water. Excellent. So body temperature will go down. That is one way. Another, I mentioned before that when body temperature increases, the blood vessels in your skin dilates. Blood vessels dilate. So what will happen in the skin? More blood will circulate. Make sense? If blood vessels get bigger, more blood will flow, right? In the body surface and from the blood, heat will easily get out from the body. So in those two ways, your skin lowers the body temperature, if the body temperature increases. Cutaneous sensations. Your skin has receptors. Which receptors? You have touch receptors, pain receptors, temperature receptors. So those receptors are present in the skin. Make sense? And because of the presence of those receptors, cutaneous receptors, you have those sensations. Make sense? So, very important. Uh, metabolic functions. I explained before, with the help of sun, sunlight, your skin produces choly, calciferol. You must remember this, right? This is active or inactive? Inactive what? Vitamin D. So, your skin produces this. And this is taken to the kidneys by the blood. Kidneys by the blood. And inside the kidney, you have converting enzyme that will convert polycalciferol to calcitriol, which is active form of vitamin D. So you see, if your skin doesn't produce polycalciferol, you will have lack of vitamin D. Make sense? So, Polycalciferol is a precursor of vitamin D. Excretion. Uh, some nitrogenous waste like ammonia, urea, those are toxic. Ammonia, urea, those are nitrogenous waste. Make sense? Those are and salt are excreted through the sweat. And that's why if you, if you taste sweat, it's salty, right? And weird taste because you have the, those nitrogenous wastes and salt in it. Okay? Those are excreted out. Uh, ammonia. Urea. Toxic chemicals. Okay, so those are the important functions of your integumentary system or skin. <clears throat> now, in your body, you have two types of skin, thick and what? Thin. Thick skin is present in the palms and soles of your foot. So, palm and sole. Rest part of the body is covered by thin skin. Another way we divide the skin by looking at the presence of hair. Hairy skin and non-hairy skin. This is what? Hairy or non-hairy? Non-hairy, right? We don't have hair and 
most part is hearing. So uh, that's how we classify the skin. Two types. Now, uh, skin has two layers in it. This is the outer layer called epidermis and inner layer which is much thicker. This is called what? Dermis. So outer epidermis and inner dermis. Make sense? So skin has these two layers. Which one is thicker? Dermis, right? Dermis is much thicker than epidermis. Epidermis has four or five layers. Four or five layers. So in this part you have four or five layers. Why I said four or five? Because in thin skin you have four. Okay? In thick skin, epidermis, you have what? Five. That is the difference. Okay? That's why I said four or five. Dermis is much thicker, but it has only two layers. Only how many? Two. Two in the dermis. Okay? Let's see what are those five layers of the epidermis. If we start from the inner most one, a single cell layer is here, that's the inner most one. This is called stratum basal or basal layer. Okay? Innermost layer of the epidermis. It is a single layer of stem cells. Okay. Single layer of stem cells. That means what? These cells can produce new cells, right? Stem cells can quickly produce what? New cells by mitosis. Okay. Uh, and since this layer is a stem cell layer, this stratum basale is also called stratum germinativum. Germinal cell layer, that means a stem cell. Germ cell or stem cell, same thing. Okay? Stratum basale or stratum germinativum. So that is the innermost layer. Then you have a layer of cells. If you look at these cells, these cells have many spines or spikes. Okay? And this layer is called stratum spinosum. That makes sense. The cells have spine like or spike like uh, structures. So this is. Stratum spinosum. Okay. Then you have a layer of cells. These cells are filled with granules. Filled with what? Anybody? Granules. You know granules, like sugar, salt granules, right? We use the term. So these are chemical granules. So these cells are filled with two types of granules. Lamellated and keratohyalin. You will see those names in the slide. Just know that these cells are filled with two types of granules. That's why this layer is called stratum granulosum. Make sense? Stratum 
granulosum. Okay. Then you have a layer which is very transparent, like glass-like layer. And this is called stratum lucidum. Lucidum means glass. So this layer is called stratum lucidum. Now, this is the layer present in the thick skin but absent in the thin skin. That's why we say four or five. So this is only in thin skin. This layer is absent in the thin skin. Okay. Then so you got one, two, three, four. Then outermost layer is called the stratum cornea. Anybody remember squamous type of cells? Those are flat cells, right? Squamous and stratum squamous means what? Single layer or multiple layer? Stratum. Stratum multiple, right? No, stratified, sorry. Stratified multiple, right? And simple is single. Remember that? So, this one has many layers of flat cells like this. So, this is what? Stratified. Stratified what? Squamous. Make sense, right? Does it make sense? Okay. So, many layers of flat cells. This layer is called stratum corneum, outermost layer, okay, and it is filled with many layers of squamous cells, make sense, flat squamous cells, and you remember a highly specialized protein present in the skin, I told you, that prevents the water from entering into the body, right? That is called keratin. Remember that? So, these squamous cells are filled with that protein, highly specialized protein, keratin. So, these are keratin filled cells, squamous cells. Okay, so we can say keratinized, stratified, squamous, okay, keratified, stratified, squamous, keratinized means keratin filled, filled with keratin, okay, so those are the layers of the epidermis. So if I ask you, epidermis, first if I ask you, skin has how many layers? Two. Two. Outer layer is called the epidermis and inner layer is called the dermis. Which one is thin? The inner. Thin, not thick. Uh, the outer. Outer epidermis, right? And inner dermis is thicker, right? But epidermis has how many layers? Four or five, right? In thick skin epidermis, how many? Five. In thin skin epidermis, four. Is it clear? Dermis has how many layers I said? Only two. Okay? So we'll see what are those two layers of the dermis. This is the dermis. And outer layer, which gives 20%, thickness of the dermis is called the papillary layer and the inner layer of the dermis gives 80% thickness and which is called the reticular layer. So outer papillary, inner reticular. 
outer papillary is formed by a connective tissue called loose areolar connective tissue. Do you remember the name? Okay. So, outer papillary is formed by loose areolar connective tissue. So, loose areolar. Reticular layer is formed by dense irregular. Do you remember this name? Two types of dense, regular and irregular. This reticular layer is formed by dense, heavily packed, right? Irregular type connective tissue. Now you tell me, which layer is soft? This one or this one? Papillary or reticular? Papillary is soft because loose areolar. Loose. Dense, I told you the collagen fibers are heavily packed, right? So it is very tough, hard. So this one is soft and loose. And when dermatitis occurs, this layer is damaged. Or inflammation occurs in which layer? Capillary layer of the dermis. Dermatitis, inflammation of the dermis, right? This layer is not affected because this is a tough, strong layer. Make sense? Very hard. So, dermatitis is the inflammation of the papillary layer of the dermis. Okay? Okay. Uh, it makes sense, you know, if you get uh, mechanical, you know, scratch or injury, this layer will be easily damaged, right? This layer will not be easily damaged. If microorganism enters, microorganism will get the space to multiply and grow, right? In the loose type. In dense type, it will not be able to penetrate. It will not be able to get in. Make sense? So, <coughs> dermis has two layers. Okay. <coughs> now, most of the skin structures are present in the dermis. You see first, this is epidermis, this is dermis. And you see, most of the skin structures, like glands, this is sweat gland, this is sebaceous gland, this is hair follicle, hair root, this is the shaft of the hair, blood vessels, arteries, veins, nerves, nerve endings, and tiny muscles. These are called erector pili muscles. All those structures are present in the dermis. Make sense? In the epidermis, I showed you cellular layers, right? Different types of cells. But other structures are mostly present in the dermis. Which structures? These are the structures. Okay. Now, you see one thing. Under the dermis, there is another layer that is called hypodermis. Hypodermis contains adipose tissue or fat. So, fat or adipose tissue. The tissue is the fat, right? Okay. And this is called hypodermis. Hypodermis. Hypo means below, low, right? And dermis, under the dermis. And this layer is also called subcutaneous hypodermis or sub. Yeah. Now you tell me, I mentioned already a few times, the skin has how many layers? Two. Two. Outer, epidermis, inner, dermis, right? So hypodermis is not a layer of the skin. Make sense? It is under the skin. 
that's why it is called subcutaneous. Sub means below, cutaneous means skin. The term cutaneous means what? Skin. Make sense? And subcutaneous or hypodermis, same thing. It contains a lot of fat, adipose tissue. There is a clinical significance of this there. What is that? Have you heard subcutaneous injection? Okay. Which patients often take subcutaneous insulin? Insulin. Diabetic patient, right? So subcutaneous. Now you tell me why? Why not intramuscular, not intravenous? If you give injection intravenous injection, that means directly into the blood, right? Inside the vein. It will act immediately. Make sense? If you inject in the muscle, intramuscular, muscle has a lot of blood flow, lot of blood. Okay? So, blood will quickly get the drug. Make sense? Medicine. So, immediately is intravenous, right? Then if you want slower than intravenous, then you will give intramuscular. Make sense? And if you want further, more slower, more slow than subcutaneous in the fat. Why? Because fat has less blood flow, very little blood flow. Okay? So if you inject there, blood will slowly go there and take the medicine, right? Slowly. So that's why it will work what? Longer time. Make sense? It will stay there for a long time. So if you want any drug to work for a long time, like several hours, then you will prefer subcutaneous. Make sense? Uh, you don't want to get insulin every hour, right? So, yes. Um, so, can the subcutaneous be called subdermal? Subdermal. Subdermal, uh, yeah. Same thing. Okay. Under the dogs. Okay, so, uh, that is the structure of the skin. Uh, in granulosum, there are two types of granules I mentioned, carotehyaline and lamellated granules. These granules uh, has two important have two important functions. One is uh, it gives the skin its durability, and number two is these chemicals also prevent the water from passing through them. So water will not be able to pass. So make the uh, skin waterproof. Durability and waterproofness. Those are given by these chemicals. <clears throat> okay, now you see one thing. This is important, I may ask you. This is the stratum cornea, outermost layer of a thin skin and this is the stratum corneum of a thick skin. Many layers of flat cells filled with keratin. These are also squamous, flat cells. But one thing you see here clearly that in thin skin, stratum corneum is very thin compared to the thick skin. Okay? So, in thick skin, this layer is much thicker. Very thick. And this layer actually gives the thickness of the thick skin, not lucidum. Although lucidum is present in thick skin, absent in thin skin, but it doesn't have anything to the thickness of the skin. Thickness is given by this layer, cornea, you see there. Okay? So that is one thing, just remember. <coughs> If you look at here, uh, here you have the stem cells. You see these cells have spikes, spinosum. You see these cells, if you look carefully, are filled with granules, granulosum, keratohyaline and lamellated granules. And this is the corneum, many layers of flat squamous cells. 
filled with keratin. <coughs> okay, now how these cells get filled with keratin? That is called keratinization. How the flat or squamous cells get filled with keratin and become keratinized cells. That process is called keratinization. I will show you what happens. Okay? So these are the cells, one type of cells in the skin called keratinocytes. So these keratinocytes produce and secrete keratin. So these are keratin secreting cells. They produce and secrete the protein keratin. Okay? And these are the squamous cells in the corneum. Squamous cells. So keratin is secreted by keratinocytes. And then these keratin molecules will enter into the squamous cells. And when these squamous cells get filled with keratin, these are now called keratinized cells. So two different things, right? Keratinocytes produce and secrete keratin. Make sense? And squamous cells get filled with what? Keratin. And become keratinized cells. Is it clear? Okay, so keratinocytes produce and secrete, and keratinized cells receive, right? Receive the keratin into them. And this process is called keratinization. Keratinization is this process. Okay. <clears throat> I already talked about two layers of dermis, right? Water loss. Through the ski, we lose water. You know that. How? Sweating, right? Sweating occurs, we lose water to the skin. And do you see it or feel it when you when sweating occurs? You do, right? You can you can feel it, right? So that is one type of water loss to the skin. But there is another type of water loss that you don't see, you don't feel. 24 hours, even when you are sleeping water is getting out through the skin, very small amount, okay, by evaporation, have you heard that term, evaporation, okay, so water molecules are leaving the body through the skin, that you don't see, you don't feel, make sense, so two ways through the skin water loss occurs, one is by sweating, you all know that, right, and another is by evaporation. Now you tell me, sweating, you feel, right? That you can see that sweating has occurred, right? So that is called sensible water loss. Make sense, right? You can sense it, you can feel it. How about evaporation? You don't see it, right? You don't feel it. So that is insensible water loss. Make sense? So. How about urination? Sensible or insensible? Sensible, right? You see that water is living, getting out from the body, right? So definitely sensible, right? Through feces, water leaves the body. Those are sensible. Sweating, sensible. Make sense? Now you tell me, when you speak, like when I give lecture, after that I get thirsty, right? I take water. Why? Because when you speak, water molecules get out from the mouth, through the mouth. When you breathe, 
water molecules get out of the body. Those are sensible or insensible? Insensible. You don't see, I don't see, right? But you know that water is getting out. And that's why you drink water after that, right? So, some water losses are sensible, some are insensible. And through the skin, both happens, right? Both happen. So, I think sensible, evaporation, insensible. Okay. Pigments in the skin. In your skin, you have pigments. And the most common, the most important one for the color of the skin is called melanin. And because of the melanin, the color of different people or different race, right, is different. And you know, sometimes people fight for melanin, right? He is this, his color is this, my color is this. So let's, you know, I don't like him. I, so it's just for melanin. So if you know science, you know the science, you <laughs> won't be serious, right? Like uh, you are fighting only for melanin, so it doesn't make sense. Uh, okay, so uh, melanin gives the color of the skin, the main one. And melanin pigments are dark or brown colored pigment, dark to brown. Okay? Mm. And if someone has more melanin, the skin will be darker. If less, mm. less dark. Makes sense? So, uh, melanin not only gives the darkness of the skin, melanin protects your skin from UV radiation that comes from outside. Okay? So, if someone has more melanin, the skin, under the skin, the tissue is more what? Protected. Makes sense? More protected. So, uh, melanin forms a shield called melanin shield. Against what? UV radiation, sunlight, right? So, uh, that's one. Carotene. Carotene is orange or yellow colored pigment. In human skin, we have very small amount of carotene. Mainly in the palm or so very small amount okay but in some fruits or vegetables you have plenty of carotene you know carrots right you know the carrots colored orange red orange yellow color so heavily filled with carrot right oranges many fruits you know or veg <coughs> Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is red colored pigment present inside the what? Hemoglobin is present where? Hemoglobin is present in the? Hemoglobin is present in the? Blood. We all know that. And lack of hemoglobin causes anemia, right? You know that. So, Hemoglobin is present in the blood. That's why the blood color is what? Red. So hemoglobin is red colored pigment in the blood. That gives the color of the blood. Red color of the blood, right? And where in the blood? Inside the red blood cells. Inside the red blood cells. That's why we say red blood cells. Those blood cells are what? Red. Make sense? because of the presence of hemoglobin. Anyway, so if in your blood you have more hemoglobin, your color of your blood is more red. If the hemoglobin concentration is low, that is anemia, right? The color of the skin changes in anemia. By looking at the color of the skin, you can suspect that someone has anemia, right? So the color gets pale. Paleness of the skin. Make sense? So, your skin color is also contributed by hemoglobin. Make sense? If you have more hemoglobin, the color will be more reddish. 
Okay. Less pair. Uh, another pigment uh, is not listed here. That is called bilirubin. Have you heard anybody? Bilirubin? Bilirubin? No? Have you heard of jaundice? Jaundice? Get here. Jaundice? Jaundice? No? Yes, no? Yes, no? <laughs> some yes, some no. Okay, this is a common, uh, actually, clinical condition. So those who you know, what happens in the skin color? In jaundice? Yellowish coloration of the skin, right? And mucous membrane, eye, right? So the pigment, bilirubin, is yellow color pigment. And if the bilirubin concentration in your body increases, that gives the color of the skin yellowish. Make sense? And that is called what? Jaundice. Yellowish coloration of the skin and mucous membrane due to increased concentration of what? The pigment, bilirubin. Make sense? Now, bilirubin actually comes from hemoglobin. When hemoglobin is destroyed, hemoglobin is converted to bilirubin. Is it clear? So, you all know that red blood cells are dying, right? Continuously. After three to four months, red blood cells die. So inside your body, all the time, red blood cells are dying. Some red blood cells are dying, right? So hemoglobin is being destroyed. Bilirubin is being formed. Make sense? And bilirubin is getting out from the body through the urine and feces. Is it clear? What's the color of the skin? Slightly yellowish because of bilirubin. Make sense? So, bilirubin gets out from the body regularly through the urine and face. Is it clear? Now, if bilirubin cannot get out from the body, obstruction occurs somewhere. Bilirubin cannot get out from the body. Bilirubin will start to build up, right? That will cause what? Jaundice. Coloration of the yellow coloration of the skin. Anyway, so that is another pigment. Now, by looking at the skin color, you can diagnose some clinical conditions or diseases. I have already mentioned, right? One is lack of hemoglobin causes what? Anemia, right? And the color of the skin will be pale. Another I mentioned, yellowish coloration of the skin, right? Due to bilirubin. That is called what? Jaundice, right? So by looking at the color change of the skin, you can diagnose some clinical condition. Another one that is called cyanosis. Bluish coloration of the skin. Cyanosis. Why it happens? Bluish coloration of the skin. If in your blood the oxygen concentration goes down. If the oxygen is low, carbon dioxide is high. That will cause the bluish coloration of the skin. If someone, someone's breathing stops, okay, for a couple of minutes, you'll see the body turns blue, right? Because the oxygen is getting less and carbon dioxide is more, right? So that is sinusis. Uh, hypertension. By looking at the change of face, you can tell that person got high blood pressure. Hypertension is high blood pressure. Okay? Flushed face, redness of the face, right? Hypertension, if you get excited, the blood pressure goes up, the color of the face changes, right? By looking at the face color, you can tell this person is getting high blood pressure. Okay? High blood pressure is going up. So, skin color is an indicator of some clinical conditions. Mm. 
glands of the skin. The glands of the skin are exocrine. Glands. You know that there are two types of glands in the body, endocrine glands, you already know, and another type is called exocrine. Skin glands are exocrine type gland. And you already know that skin has two types of glands, right? Sweat glands and sebaceous glands. Okay? Both are exocrine type glands. Now, the secretion of exocrine gland could be three types, three ways exocrine glands secrete the chemicals. Merocrine secretion, apocrine secretion, holocrine secretion. Those are the modes how the exocrine glands secrete the chemicals. So, I'll just explain those three methods of secretion. First, merocrine. 